Ukraine is on the march. The Eastern European country has turned the tables on the Russian invaders and is taking back conquered territory, largely thanks to state-of-the-art NATO weapons that have easily routed Russia's outdated gear. Vladimir Putin has raged at NATO nations threatening nuclear war, but he has no answer for their weapons. Until now. Because winter is coming, and it's about to get cold. Europe gets a large percentage of its natural gas from Russia and relies on it to heat the country in the cold northern European winter. How much of its gas? In 2021, natural gas made up just over a quarter of Germany's energy usage, and over half of that was imported from Russia, much of it through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline, which runs over 750 miles from Russia to Germany through the Baltic Sea. Russia has frequently used the pipeline as leverage, shutting off gas in July. In September, a massive leak in the pipeline was thought to be sabotage, although Putin blamed NATO. But is a far worse crisis coming? The crisis in Ukraine began at the tail end of winter 2022, and through spring, summer, and fall, the pipeline gave Putin relatively little leverage over Europe. But temperatures in Germany can get brutally cold in winter, and with several long cold months ahead, Putin could attempt to starve out the country, and NATO as a whole, by cutting off the gas. This would mean much more than just people bundling up. Gas prices would skyrocket with limited supply. Those on fixed incomes might not even be able to heat their homes, which would lead to an inevitable death toll. The hope for Russian hardliners is that the German people would see their own country suffer, support for Ukraine would waver, and NATO might decide it's best just to let Putin have his way. But Germany has a plan. The people of Europe have known a possible crisis was coming for a long time. After all, Putin's belligerence didn't start with the February invasion. He's been slicing off pieces of Ukraine, Georgia, and other countries for years. While he stayed clear of NATO lines so far, his aggressive behavior made a conflict feel inevitable, and so Germany has been working on a big plan to wean itself off Russian natural gas entirely by 2024. They want to both eliminate their dependency on Russia and replace this energy with more sustainable alternatives. But this isn't going to be an easy task. The country has taken some major steps already to build up a reserve store of gas before the crisis truly hits. While many in the country are looking to get off of natural gas altogether, that's a long-range project, and they don't have a long time. So a big part of the plan is to find ways to seamlessly replace Russian gas. They've already started by leasing four floating storage and regasification units that will be able to take important natural gas and convert it from liquid to the gas they need to power the country. These four massive facilities should be able to handle up to 6.25 billion cubic meters each, and they're set to be located in Wilhelmshaven, Brunsbüttel, Stade, and Lubmin. But where will these gas supplies actually come from? The country has existing arrangements with Qatar, Australia, and the United States, but the biggest new source of natural gas may be further north, Canada. Canada's tar sands are a massive source of natural gas, and when a pipeline with the United States was scuttled in recent years, it meant that more of that gas would be available for export off the continent. Germany has good relations with Canada, a fellow NATO member, and would likely be able to avoid price gouging by working with them. But one can't rely on gas alone. To combat the shortage, Germany might be going old school. The country hurriedly passed a law to bring oil field and coal-fired power plants back online in the event that the gas reserves get perilously low. The government hopes this could add 10 gigawatts of reserve capacity to the system, and the current arrangement allows for this to run until the end of March 2024. But relatively few of these plants are still available, and while this isn't a long-term solution, it might just be enough to prevent brutal blackouts in the dead of winter. And from old school to ultra-modern, another solution might offer hope. Just when they thought they were out, Putin pulls them back in. Germany moved to shut down its three nuclear power plants not long ago due to fears over potential accidents and other environmental concerns. While many say that nuclear power is far safer than the alternative, the concerned weren't assuaged, so the plan was to shut them down at the end of 2022. But now Germany's grid operators are researching whether the plants can be kept going longer without investing in new fuel rods. While these nuclear power plants only account for around 6% of Germany's overall power supply, they could be key in bridging the gap. If a long-term crisis emerges, there might be pressure to build new nuclear plants. But that's a massive infrastructure project that definitely wouldn't help in winter 2022. And the clock is ticking. Germany's current goal is to fill its gas storage facilities to 95% of their expected level by the start of November before the need ramps up. It's likely prices will go up as demand does, and Germany's stores are its best hope to get through winter. Demand varies each year based on the weather, but it's likely that the country will need everything it can get, especially if people panic and use more than average. Nah, when has that ever happened? Hey, does anyone have some spare 2020 toilet paper, by the way? But none of this comes cheap. 
A big part of the plan is about funding, and that means pain in a lot of ways. It starts with a bailout for Unipar, the country's largest Russian gas importer. They've essentially been cut off from their key source of income, and the government needs their help to fulfill the nation's energy needs. So they've cut a deal for a bailout of 15 billion euros in exchange for a 30% stake in the company. This should hopefully be enough. But they're also ready to step in again with a bigger bailout if losses get too big. This might be controversial, like bailouts always are, but the government sees Unipar as an essential partner. But it's nowhere near as controversial as this next part. Remember when George H.W. Bush said, read my lips, no new taxes, and then raised taxes? Ask Bill Clinton how that worked out. The public hates taxes, and any government that raises them is likely to face some fierce blowback. But that hasn't stopped Germany's Olaf Scholz from doing what needs to be done. Major costs are coming and he's responded by passing two new taxes, one to fund the higher cost of procuring the gas and one to fund the efforts to fill the storage facilities ahead of schedule. It's estimated this will cost the average German family about 480 euros a year, but it'll vary as the tax will be applied to energy bills. The taxes kicked in on October 1st and are expected to stay long term, but to alleviate public anger there is a limited sales tax break being introduced at the same time. But all this may not be enough. Germany has planned well for a long winter without Russian gas, and they know they could still run into trouble. That's why the government has asked people to reduce their personal gas consumption by up to 20% to prevent a gas emergency. But can the average person actually do this? In some cases, it might be as simple as doing what Dad said when you wanted to turn the thermostat up. Just put on a sweater. By reducing the thermostat to the point where it's still bearable but you need to put on a few extra layers, it might be possible to shave a few points off the budget and shave some money off your gas bill. But one big factor possibly stands in the way. In many ways, Germany's at the mercy of Mother Nature here. The winter may be mild, in which case the gas needs might be below normal. Or it might be a standard winter where Germany's stores of natural gas and other supplies can carry them through. But the trend has been toward more extreme weather over the last few years. Remember the polar vortex that seems to float through every year now? And in a situation where the temperatures drop well below freezing for an extended period, Germany could find itself working through that strategic gas reserve extremely quickly and entering a gas emergency. Currently, long-range weather indicators are that the winter will be average in temperatures but low on snow, which would be good news. But the polar vortex is unstable and could collapse, leading to a cold and brutal winter in Central Europe. And that's where things get tricky. The government's hoping to ride out the crisis through voluntary rationing and alternative energy sources, but if demand for gas is higher than expected, it's possible the country would have to go to mandatory rationing. And that would fall to their network regulator, NNETS-A, which is already collecting data from thousands of companies. The goal is to avoid a total power grid shutdown which would affect millions of people in their homes and could lead to countless, primarily from the poor and elderly, freezing to death. And in order to prevent that, it's the companies that'll have to take a hit. Germany's emergency response to a gas shortage might ironically look a lot like the response to another crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic. If things get bad enough, the country might decide to save gas by eliminating large non-residential settings from the power grid. That means that workplaces might go remote again, with people firing up the Zoom chat. Schools might go remote as well, although that would be likely much later in the process. Non-essential businesses like restaurants and retail that use a lot of power might be ordered to close as well until the gas crisis alleviates. The regulators will carefully balance six factors including the company's gas footprint, how much damage shutting down would cause, and how long it would take to start things up again. And so, Germany's long cold winter might get even quieter as people return to hunkering down in their homes and the city centers go silent. But is this likely to happen? If you ask Olaf Scholz, Germany is well prepared. There are other emergency contingencies that the country could take, like emergency imports from the Netherlands or Norway. While this could be costly, the cost of a gas crisis would be much higher, especially if it meant shutting down sectors of the economy. And while Scholz was elected as a liberal leader pushing for sustainable energy, this potential crisis has turned him into a bit of a gas hawk. He's now pushing for a pipeline from the other side of Europe, starting in Spain and making its way over to Germany and other countries. If you listen to him, the future sounds bright but in other ways it's already getting dark. If you're looking for ominous signs, look no further than the lights on German skylines. The view from the cities was always stunning, and usually cast in light to allow tourists to enjoy the landmarks even after dark. But now, people are visiting sites like Dresden's Riverside or Berlin's Central Cathedral, noticing the buildings are dark. 
This isn't any sort of federal order, it's likely either voluntary decisions or local ordinances as the cities try to conserve energy. While it's not a sign of a crisis just yet, it is definitely a sign that people are worried. And if dimming the lights now can prevent a long, dark winter, most Germans are likely to think it's worth it. But for now, all eyes are on Putin and the Nord Stream 2, as everyone in Europe hopes a perilous situation isn't about to get worse. With both Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 blown up, however, Germany is in even more peril than before, and many German citizens are looking forward to a winter of energy rationing. There's been no official announcement of rationing just yet, but it's almost an inevitability, given that transitioning to alternative energy suppliers or refiring decommissioned coal and petroleum power plants is going to take a lot of time. For its part, Russia is denying having anything to do with the pipeline explosions and is blaming it on bad maintenance, but it's clear to the world this is just another attempt by Putin to strong-arm the West into stopping support for Ukraine. Want to know more about the state of the conflict? Check out the US weapon beating Russians and Ukraine, or watch What If the US Invades Russia Day by Day for what happens if things really go downhill.